How is it to get everything, Travis? Does it feel good? I don't want your help. I don't want you. What? I want you out of my life, Jack. I never want to see you again. Honey, honey, you don't mean that. Yes, I you do. No, listen, you're upset. You're hurt. It's understandable. I mean it, Jack. You can't mean it, Erica. I have never meant anything more. No, it is not over. Jack, I want you out of my house. I want you out of my life. I want you to go. Now, you listen to me. I am not going anywhere. Love me. No. I want you out. Don't no, listen to me. The judge made a crummy decision. You're hurt. It's understandable, Eric. Out. Look, we love each other, Erica. What the judge did, that doesn't make any difference. We belong together, especially now. I want you out. Why the hell are you doing this? Why? I lost my daughter today. Thanks to you. I told the truth. Oh, Erica. yes. Oh, you told the truth. And because of that, I am losing my little girl. Please. I will never forgive you for that. Please don't let this ruin what we have together, Erica. We love each other. No, I don't love you. I don't love you anymore. Not after what happened today in that courtroom. No, Erica. You, you sat there and you made me look like a liar in front of the judge. You turned the judge against me. No, I didn't. Look, Judge Prendergast has ruled in favor of fathers before. You know that. And you helped him. You turned the tide. And these emotional outbursts of yours, this hysteria, that made matters a hell of a lot worse. Hysteria? Is that what you call it? I was reacting just like any normal mother would have loved her child. And blurting out about the new baby? That cinched it. How dare you stand there and blame me and tell me that this is my fault? How dare you do that? I had no choice. I had to just say how I felt about my daughter or the judge would never know how much I love my daughter, that I'm a better mother, th th that I'd be better for her than Travis. Sweetheart, the judge ruled against you for a reason. Yes, yes, for a number of reasons, yes. Because Dr. Tolan gave incredibly biased, prejudicial evidence against me in favor of Travis because Travis had that little girl so upset and so confused that, that he made her say anything he wanted her to. And because you know as well as I do that that judge has a lot of trouble dealing with women as equals with men. And because you made me look like a liar and an adulteress. You are! You sat up in that witness stand and you perjured yourself. And we did commit adultery. Oh, you... And I am not going to let you toss me out of your life. You hear me? Get out of here? No. I'm not going to get out of here. I'm not going to let you take your rage out on me. We don't have anything left, Jack, and it's oh, over. Yes, we do. It no, is not do. over. No, it we are going to go on, no. and we are going to get married, and we are going to have the life that we should have had. We are going to be happy together. We are going to care for each other until we're old people, and we are going to go on. No, we can't. Yes, we can. No, it is impossible. Is it? Yes. <laughs> oh, Jack. See, that is how you really feel. <laughs> You don't want to believe it. No. Yes, honey. Yes. Tom, I realize how much this is. You're going to be just fine in Seattle. You're going to be just fine. I mean, Seattle is, is a beautiful place. I'm scared. Well, but honey, you have a treat ahead of you, really, if you think about it. I mean, it's a brand new place, a place to get to know, and uh, you're going to make lots of new friends. I know them. And there's a new school for you to get to know, and new teachers, and I know that, that you'll have a lot of fun. Your daddy's going to show you lots of places. I'll miss you. Well, I think just maybe a little bit. But then you'll have a new home to get used to and, and, and get to know. And I told you, honey, I am going to... I'm going to call you every single night. And I'm going to come to visit you. And so is Grandma. She will? Of course she will. Oh, yes. Now, I want you to go upstairs. Because you have to go to bed. Okay, honey? Okay. Mommy, be right up. I'm going to tuck you in. Okay. Good night. Good night, Bianca. Good night.
Now, do you see what you've done to me? Do you see what this is costing me? Do you? Will you please now leave me alone? Look, I explained to you why I had to do what I did. I thought you would understand. I... I understand what it is that you have said to me. Now, you understand what I'm telling you. I don't love you anymore, Jack. I mean it. I hate you. You love me, Erica. No, there's only one person in my whole life that I love, and that's my daughter. And thanks to you, I have lost her. It was not my fault. Yes, it was. And every time I look at you, I think about that, and I, I hate you. And I can't even stand looking at you anymore. Palooza. Mr. Jackson Montgomery? Yeah, yeah, that's me. For you. Thanks. Here you go. Uh -huh. Dear Jack, it's hard for me to write my thoughts down, but it's time I start trying to express how I feel. These past few weeks have been the most painful I've experienced in my life. I know they haven't been easy for you either. So many hurtful things have been said by both of us. But perhaps the pain is less sharp now. Maybe we could talk more calmly now about all that's happened. I would like to try. Could you come see me at Linden when you're free? Please. I'm not gonna get out of here. I'm not gonna let you take your rage out on me. We don't have anything left, Jack. It is oh, over. Yes, we do. It no, is not over. No, we are gonna over. go on. No. And we are gonna get married and we are gonna have the life that we should have had. We are gonna be happy together. We are gonna care for each other until we're old people. And we are gonna go on. No, we can't. Yes, we can. It is impossible. Is it? Yes. Jack, you have got to do something about Erica. Well, no. I mean, it was just horrible. There was Jack at the altar with Sarah, who was wearing the most gauche wedding dress imaginable, of course. Mm. And I tried to stop them, but I couldn't because Jack wouldn't believe that I loved him. Erica, that's some nightmare. Oh, it was, but you know what, Olga? It made everything clear because... I know now that, of course, I will never get over this, this horrible loss of Bianca. But despite Jack's role in it, I know now that I love him. I know that in spite of everything, in my heart, I love him. I love him. I want him. I, I need him. Oh, well, now, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to forgive him. You are? Yes, I am. I'm just, I'm going to just let everything go. You know what I mean? I mean, all that terrible, terrible things that he said about me on that witness stand, all the cruel things that he has said to me to hurt my feelings since then. I'm just wrapped all up in a ball. I'm just gonna let it go. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Yeah. You and Jack back together. Oh, that's swell. Of course, but you're gonna have... What? What? But what? Well, I mean, I was going to say, I hope he can forgive you for all those mean things you said to him. Oh, God. Don't worry about me. I can handle Jack. Well, I hope so, darling, for your sake. Well, you just better scoot now so I can get home and make myself beautiful and get ready for the most romantic reconciliation in history. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll scoot. <laughs> Good luck, Erica. Thanks. She fired me, Jack, just like that. She dumped me. Erica doesn't care about ruining people's lives. Meanwhile... I have been working my tail off for enchantment while she's home looking for Yes, wounds. you have, and you've been doing excellent work. Yeah, try telling her that. I intend to tell her that, sir. She is absolute dead set against me having anything to do with enchantment. She told me, she told me that she hired somebody else to do my job. But get this, this is really the capper. But I went back because I had forgotten my purse. 
Yeah, look, I know you're very upset. But upset? If you could... Jack, I don't have a job. I quit the university to work at yes, Enchantment. Yes, I know that. But listen to me. I really don't think you have anything to worry about. I will talk to Eric. I will take a look at this contract of this person that she signed on to take your place. I will talk to her. I really believe that I can convince her into rehiring you. Okay? She doesn't want me, Jack. I'll Excuse me. Uh, Judge Cooper wants us back inside. He's ready to rule. Uh, I'll be right there, Mary. Thanks. I have to go. Excuse me. Don't move, please. Okay? Come on, folks. We gotta get going. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together to witness the marriage of Erica Kane and Jackson Montgomery. Their love has weathered countless tempests. Their dedication to one another has been tested time and again. Yet they have remained constant and loyal. It gives me great pleasure to officiate at this occasion, to witness the exchange of vows between two people so much in love. And now, before we begin, is there anyone present who can offer just cause for these two not to be married? It's okay, Mommy. I like Uncle Jack again. Oh, Bianca, I love you so much, honey. I love you, too. I want to be with you every minute of the day. Oh, honey, oh, you make Mommy so happy. Then let us proceed. Erica Kane, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? To have and to hold from this day forth, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, as long as you both shall live. I have to know. I have to know if you meant what you said in that note. Every word. Well, it looks like we need to clear the air. Yeah, wipe the slate clean. Get everything out in the open. You first. You said you wanted to talk calmly about everything that's happened since the custody hearing. Jack, I have... I have been miserable. I have been down and, and, and discouraged and, I don't know, somehow defeated. Having Bianca was the single most important thing that I ever did in my life. And now that she left for Seattle with Travis, I just, I felt like there was no more reason for living, that I had failed. I mean, losing my daughter was the most devastating blow that I have ever, ever suffered. Even more so than losing my father when I was a little girl. And you blamed me. Jack, I blamed everyone. I blamed you, and I blamed Travis, and then my mother, and the judge, and Dr. Tolan, everyone. And I retreated inside myself, into my shell. And the only thing that could get through was, was my own pain. And, I, and anybody who offered help, I pushed away. Anyone, I pushed away. And, and I just turned my pain into anger, and I used it to bludgeon anybody who, who tried to get yeah, near honey, me. honey, 
Unfortunately, the people you bludgeoned were the people who love you most. I wanted to hurt you. I wanted to get back at you. And I'm so sorry, Jack. I'm so sorry. I know now that what you did on the stand, you did because you thought it was right. You, you thought you were doing the right thing, and I should have trusted you instead of trying to punish you. And now Bianca's gone. Hey. I'm here. Jack, we've been through so much. We have loved each other so long. What do you want me to say? Say so you forgive me? So you love me and, and want to start over? Stewart, have you lost what little... You want to start over? Don't you? Well, you still want me, don't you? Oh, you know I do. I mean, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I wonder how I managed to get through so many years of my life without, without knowing what it's like to feel this way. I feel that way, too. I love you. But you lie so easily, Erica. You're so believable. I mean, you blur the line between truth and fiction. I'm not perfect. I never said I was. But you're so good at it. And lying has been part of this relationship since, since the very beginning, and but I hate that. You're not perfect either, Jack. And I hate the bad parts of our relationship just as much as you do. But, Jack, we've been through hell together. And I think that we've proven that we have the kind of love that can just weather anything. So come on, please, let's just put the past behind us. Can we? Of course we can, if you want it as much as I do. Jack. Honey, these... These lies are so destructive. Well, I promise you on my word of honor that I will never lie to you again under any circumstances. I swear it. You know I can't concentrate when you look at me that way. What way? What way? This way. This way? I had about 200 points I wanted to make in the course of this discussion. That maybe? Yeah, I know. I just hope even one of them come back to mm -hmm. me. Can you forgive me? I am helplessly in love with you. Say you forgive me. I forgive you. The problem is you, when you're at your worst, you, uh, you say you don't love me. Well, you say a lot of things when you're upset, too, that you don't mean. Anyway, what we said was in the past, remember? We're starting off. Oh, Jack, I have never loved anyone the way I love you. Mm. Mm, I love you. Mm. Say. We've lost a little weight, haven't we? Well, I've been miserable. <laughs> well, we don't want you to waste the weight on nothing. Mm, how about some dinner? What do you say? The Chateau or the Valley Inn? Okay, your choice. My choice. Yes. Chateau. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm so. What do, what, do, what do you want? The uh, Chateau Briand and the chocolate mousse you're so fond of? Mmm. <laughs> yeah? Or do you want the. Uh, Grilled chicken and this moose. Mm. Never gonna get there that way. <laughs> <laughs> I am hungry, you know. First time in weeks I have an appetite thanks to you. Well, I wouldn't be so free with your credit if I were you. Absolutely, you were you were right all along, you know. 
I mean, after I lost that custody battle, all I wanted to do was just find a hole somewhere, dig a hole somewhere, and crawl into it and just die. But you didn't leave me. You never gave up. You never abandoned me. So, time to just vanquish all self-pity, put it away, and proceed to the area where I know I haven't failed. My work. Yeah, speaking of enchantment, um, you know, I wasn't holding that company together all by myself. Sarah Connor was very helpful. Yeah, well, she's in the past. Yeah, she's in the past because you let her go. Mmm, good news travels fast, huh? Well, anyway, you know, she shouldn't have been hired full-time without my approval. Erica, you what? weren't available. I had to make a decision. Now, I think it should be fair and give her back her job. What, Jack? After the way that she spoke to me when I fired her? Oh, I can't. No, come on. No way. No, no. Sarah Connor is no longer on my payroll. I'm serious, Jack. Your former dinner companion is no longer working for me. My former dinner companion? Mm -hmm. Well, my former dinner companion has quit her job at PVU and moved out of university housing. Oh, that's too bad. Is she homeless? I know she's brainless, because anyone with brains would have known they should have consulted me. I am the head of enchantment. Yes. Nobody disputes that. But while you were busy digging this hole that you wanted so badly to crawl into, she stepped in and helped keep this company together. Now, you saw her PR campaign. You approved her PR campaign. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Well, she developed that all by herself. She developed it. She pitched it. Now she wants to implement it. And you fire her? Okay, look, she has talent. Her uh, part-time work was more than adequate, but she lacks experience. Now, I offered to write her an excellent recommendation. Oh, don't look at me like that. Come on, it's nothing personal. I mean, Sarah is just not the right person for the job. Besides, I already promised it to somebody else. Oh, you did? I see. And this somebody else. I presume they have a lot more experience in yes. things like this. Yes. And their qualifications are a hell of a lot better. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, good. You can tell them that they can have the next job that opens up. No. Why not? Well, I can't go back on my promise. And besides, Sarah can get a job somewhere else, especially with my recommendation. Uh -huh. Well, this paragon of public relations knowledge, um, is this somebody that uh, is currently working for Enchantment? Well, it's nobody you know. Nobody I know. Hmm. Well, you never know. What's his or her name? Actually, it's somebody who works with Olga. Somebody Olga has worked with professionally for decades. With somebody Olga. Olga, yes. Somebody that she absolutely respects very, very highly. I don't know. Somebody with one of those non-gender specific names. Um, uh, 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 slips my mind. I see. Well, I don't think it slipped your mind. I think the reason that you can't think of this name is because there is no such person. Well, that's ridiculous. I think this song and dance that you gave Sarah about having somebody waiting in the wings for this job is a crock. Now, is it? You know, I, I don't want to say this at all, but do I have to remind you? I'm the head of enchantment. It's my prerogative to hire or fire Damn it, Erica, I, I asked you a question. Well, she's fired. She's going to stay fired. That's it. You know, after that oath of honesty that you gave me not ten minutes ago, you were standing here and you were lying to me, aren't you? You know something, Jack? Even if I were to tell you the truth, that discussion that, that took place long before I took this oath. You're so convinced that Sir is some kind of threat to you. No, I'm so convinced that it's absurd for me to, to pay someone a salary who I don't trust. No, it isn't her that you don't trust, damn it, Erica. It's me. Now, you swore to me that there would be nothing but honesty between us from here on out. You were standing here. You were lying to me, damn it. Okay, you want honesty? Here's honesty. I'm going to give you honesty. Good. This victim, who you seem so intent on protecting, is nothing but a selfish, self-centered little witch who doesn't care who she steps on on her way to the top. That's fine. That's one way to get to the top of the ladder. That's okay. But anybody who is stupid and doesn't see it deserves probably to have serious boot just ground into their heart. But guess what? Not me. I'm not stupid. So you know what? She's fired. She's staying fired. That's the end. You have no reason to feel threatened by Sarah or anybody else. Oh, Jack, you're a man. You have no idea what, what a woman like Sarah is capable of doing, but I do. I know all the tricks she can pull. I know all the mischief she would delight in pulling if she stayed in enchantment, which she is not going to because I will not allow it. Well, you're the boss, but these are very tough times economically, and a good boss doesn't yank the rug out from under a valuable employee. Sarah is not an employee. And besides, her skills are not in public relations, they're in men, and in this case, my man. So guess what? She can peddle her skills somewhere else. Now, come here, come here, come here. 
Now, you listen to me. There's nothing between Sarah and me but a professional relationship. Okay, Jack, look, I wasn't going to mention this, but you have been seeing Sarah regularly since you and I broke up. Well, if you call twice for dinner and around the office regularly, yeah. You have seen her in your room. Say what? You saw her in your room last night. And don't you stand there and lie to me. I have no, no intention of standing here and lying to you. Yes, she was in my room last night. How the hell do you know? I know that because I called. She answered and I hung up. Without saying anything. Well, of course not. What in the world was I going to say? Listen, I mean... It's not for me to judge. Whatever you did while you and I were apart, it's not for me to judge. Sarah was in my room because she was so excited that she had gotten out from under her PVU job and could go to work for us full-time immediately, and she picked up the phone because I'd asked her to. Fine. You were so convinced that we were sleeping together. You have so little faith in me that you have shot down an innocent person to keep the hell away from me. No, I have a lot of faith in you. My faith in you is not weak. My faith in you is strong enough to move mountains. Sarah is the problem. No, 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 no. The problem here boils down to a basic lack of trust. I don't trust you. No, Sarah. you don't trust me. Prove it. Pick up that phone, call Sarah, and tell her she's rehired. America. No. Call Sarah and tell her that you've reconsidered. No, I will not. And I will not lay my head on the chopping block for that woman, Jack. And I will tell you something. I do not understand you're issuing me an ultimatum about this whole thing. After I have just forgiven you, just welcomed you back into my life with open arms. Wait a minute, wait. You forgave me? I thought I was the one doing the forgiving here, Erica. Writing you that note? Reaching out, inviting you to come over here to speak to me? That was an act of forgiveness. For what? You know, for what? For for Bianca? What? You're forgiving me for not committing perjury on the stand. We would already shut your case so damn full of holes it had to sink. You could have saved me. You chose not to. No, Erica, I chose to tell the truth. I tell the truth when I'm in a court of law. And I should tell the truth in my personal life. But ever since I've hooked up with you, that seems damn near impossible. You know very well that Bianca would be with me today if you had just changed your testimony. That's all there is to it. She would be here. Liar, adulteress, those are the very words that Judge Prendergast thought of when he issued his decision. No, 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 no. It was not my lying that cost you your daughter. It was your lying. Your lying on the stand and the months and months of lying that came before that. Okay, look, this is just old ground. No, 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 no. You wait a minute. I was the one that wanted to be honest. From the beginning, I wanted to tell Travis, I wanted to tell Bianca, but no. You wanted to lie. You thought lying would be a better way to handle it. I was protecting my daughter. Do not twist this and around, I'm Jack. To death of this compulsion you have of controlling everything in your life. What? This compulsion has cost you every important relationship in your life, Erica, including the relationship with your own daughter. Oh, I don't deserve to be attacked like this. How dare you stand there and speak to me like that? This is your chance, Erica. Call Sarah. No. You can trust me. Now, it's safe, honey. You can trust me. Call her. No. Right? That's the way it's going to be. Jack, you can't leave now. Come on, you're just not seeing anything oh, clearly. I am seeing things clearly for the first time, Erica. Now it is over between you and me. What? Jack, you are willing to throw everything away because I won't rehire Sarah Connor? It's over. Jack, Jack, you can't do this. Jack! Jack, you can't just say it's over and walk out. Erica, there's nothing left. There is our life together. There is our love. No, that is gone. What? Jack, you can't leave us. Don't leave me. Jack. Goodbye, Erica. Jack! Carefully. You have aimed too high. Learned from this experience, how in the world did you ever imagine that you could fit in here? If I were you, I would just pack my bags and go back to whatever godforsaken backwater little town you came from and just reevaluate. Accept the fact you're not talented enough, you're not smart enough, you could never make it in the big time. Well, run along. Sira, there is no job for you here. Not here and not anywhere. Please. Oh, 
Except I did see a pail and a, and a mop down the hall a little while ago. And would you like to try that, Sarah? Would you like to try cleaning? Nothing that requires too much of a challenge. It's right down there. Why don't you go ahead and go for it, Sarah? Ah! Erica, I'm sorry. I, don't, I didn't mean to do that. You what? Joan, hold on my calls. You want your calls held, Erica? They're held. You rotten little tramp. Well, that's the pot calling the kettle black. You have been had and dumped by every man in this town. Well, maybe we should compare notes. Let's just settle down and maybe talk about this a little more calmly, huh? Jack! I knew you stop laughing at him. This is not funny. This is deadly serious. Oh, I know, I know, I know that. You're both lucky to still be alive. Uh, now I know I was right to fire this traitor, Jack. Traitor! I came here with every intention of making good. Making what? Or should I say making who? Oh, I quit oh, my oh. job at the university to work here full time. And just because Jack hired me, you're jealous. Me? Yes, jealous of you're you? Jealous. Oh, ha! That is laughable, yeah, 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 okay, Sarah. Okay, 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 really? Sit down here and have yourself a talk, okay? Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Thank you. You. She's a monster. I said come sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. What? You're kissing her over me? Jack, the woman physically attacked me. She punched me in my jaw. It looks to me, Erica, like you gave as good as you got, okay? Jack, Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, see what she's like? Now, come on. Get out of here, Jack. No, no, no. Get her out of here. Get out of here. All right, kill her. Oh. Erica, don't you ever learn? You keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Oh, shut up. Bingo? Oh, come on, just a little. The woman attacked me. What did you do to set her off, Erica? Nothing. She just went berserk. Huh? Yes, yeah, she just she just went berserk. She's been jealous of me ever since she she came to this town. Well, she's jealous of you. Yes, of course she is. Then why did you blast Jack when uh, she he took her side? Because he's an idiot. Couldn't be the other way around, could it? Look, I am not jealous of her. Yes, you are, Erica. That's why you fired her. I fired her because, uh, in addition to being inadequate. I have already hired somebody else to take the job. Yes, so you say. 
I am running this company, Adam. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right into the ground. I don't need to listen to this. Your attempt at revenge backfired, Erica. All you've succeeded in doing is driving Jack and Sierra closer together. Look, spare me your little lecture on the art of revenge and get out, Adam. Take your lousy advice and just leave. You're so cute when you're mad. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. It's true. I threw the first punch. Do you think I'm awful? No, no, I don't think anything like that at all. I know for a fact that Erica has a very special way of getting to people. She just kept needling oh, me. I know, and needling I don't believe me, me sir. I don't. It's so unfair, Jack. I've worked so hard to get where I am, and when Erica was so glibly insulting me about to take it all away from me, I was helpless. There was nothing I could do. But Decker, huh? Jack, it's not funny. It's horrible. I've never done anything like this in my entire life. I, I never should have let her get to me like that. Oh, sorry to intrude. Um, but I'm on my way over to the Valley Inn for lunch. That's where I'll be. Should Erica's latest caper make anyone change his mind about selling me a stock? It was my bed. Fell in here. Trevor, it's Erica. Oh, thank God Natalie knew where you were. What's up, darling? Oh, Trevor, I want you to come over here to Enchantment Headquarters right away. I want you to arrest Sarah Connor for assault. Gating an alleged assault. Oh, you what? gotta be kidding. Erica called. She's pressing charges. Jack, I told you she was gonna do it. Look, let me do you a favor. Just don't take this to the DA. He will laugh you right out of his office. Is my face all swollen up? Well, honey, I, I don't see much swelling. It's on the inside, Mother. Well, she ground my cheek into my teeth. Maybe I should take you to the hospital. Mother, Sarah Connor is a monster. I am not leaving this office until Trevor Dillon arrives with a warrant for her arrest. Are you sure you want to do this? Mother, the woman attacked me without any provocation at all. She leapt up and she punched me in the face. Honey, don't you think... I'm sorry. Is there anything I could maybe do to help? Oh, the only thing that will help is to get that Sarah Connor in a cage where she belongs. I think maybe you're exaggerating just a little bit, Erica. You just, I think, have a, a tiny bruise. A tiny bruise? Mother, I am disfigured and you dismiss this as a tiny bruise? Look, my entire company is, is is built on my beauty. Now, how many people do you think are going to buy my cosmetics if my face is flawed? You know, that may be the most ridiculous thing that you have ever said. Fine. Wonderful. Thank you for all your support, Mother. I mean, I am just punched in the face by this predatory female, and you tell me that I'm ridiculous. Oh, Trevor, thank heaven. Oh, baby, baby poor baby. Oh, Erica, you look, you look fantastic. Where'd she hit you? Here. Oh. My jaw may be broken. I may have to go to the hospital and have it wired. Well, because you, of Sarah Connor. You look okay. Why don't you tell me exactly what happened? Okay, well, she attacked me. Uh -huh. She just, she flew up at me uh -huh. and she started beating me uh -huh. for no provocation. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay. No, no, no motive at all. No. No, and you no. didn't try to protect yourself. Well, as much as I could, of course I did. You know, I did what I could. But, I mean, if it weren't for Adam and Jack, she would have killed me. <laughs> oh, Erica. Uh, Mother, you were it here. You didn't see the uh, hate in her uh, eyes. It's just a slight bruise. No, no, no broken bones, right? Well, I am in intolerable pain. Yeah, well, just maybe a couple of aspirins would help. No, hurry, hurry and arrest her. Well, I, well, I don't think that's such I a hot arrested. idea. I want her arrested. Well, let me explain for why not. Assault would you and just battery. listen to me, please? Just trying to help you, darling. Okay. Hey, it's not such a good idea to bring this into court because you haven't suffered a serious injury. Not and a B, serious no, injury. No, now, B, according to Miss Connor. You have spoken to yes, her? Yes, I've spoken to her. I, I, after the first blow, she did apologize to you, and she would not have continued the altercation had you not, in fact, continued to try to decimate her. In self and, and, and in addition, there were no witnesses. And can you imagine the publicity? It would be very ugly. I don't think that's the image you want for enchantment. Fighting, banshee, women. <laughs> what is she going to do next? 
It's not enough to keep me off the job market. Now she has to put me in jail. No, I, I, I don't think I'd worry about that. Don't worry about it. Sir, these charges that she's trying to bring against you, they're not going to stick. She's the most vindictive woman I've ever met in my life. Yes, well, she can't be difficult. Difficult? Try impossible. Forgive me for saying so, but I honestly don't see what you ever saw in her. <coughs> yeah, well, her bark can be a hell of a lot worse than her bites. Uh, yeah, well, tell me that when I'm behind bars, Jack. That's for her trying to keep you off the job market. I think I figured out a way to stop that. How? Now she's not going to like it. I'm not sure I like it. But I think it's time to teach Miss Kane a lesson. Well, are you going to tell me what it is, or are you going to keep me in suspense? Don't jeopardize it with something this petty. Petty? Is it worth it? Is it worth dragging this bimbo into court to drill a hole into your own ship? Why would a righteous claim hurt my ship? Why would it hurt my company? Darling, don't you think you've been through enough garbage lately? Why hint the tabloids at another headline? Hmm? All right, I'll drop it. It's really for the best. I you? swear you'll never regret it. I hope not. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you. Miss Kane, you're never a bother. I love the view. <laughs> you take care, ladies. Bye-bye, Trevor. You know the funny thing, Mother? I never intended to blacklist Sarah Connor. I didn't think you really did, sweetie. Well, I just blurted it out because she made me so angry. Yeah, I understand. But now that she's gotten away with this outrage, I have every intention of going through with it. As the second largest stockholder in this company, I have every right to be here. Not in my office, you don't. Well, would you prefer to step outside and bring me up to date? on the status of the new PR campaign uh, since you fired Sarah Connor? Coming along. Whom have you hired to replace her? How soon can he or she start? Team is busy at the moment. He will be busy for several weeks before no, he joins No, 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 that's not nearly good enough. We've already lost Nico as the, as the rep for our men's line. We need somebody immediately, Erica. Hey, have you even bothered to, uh, to, to review Sarah's proposal? Yes, I have, and I totally disagree with her ideas, and I have decided to scrap her entire concept. I won't allow that. You won't allow that? That's right. We've already dropped a, a fortune into that campaign. Yeah, without my knowledge. Erica, I'm not going to let you throw this company's money down the drain just to spite Sarah. I am the CEO, Adam Chandler. I am running this company. Not unless you have the backing of the majority of the stockholders, and I own 40% of this company, and I'm opposing you. And I'm going to override you. Well, you only have 48% of the stock, Erica. So you need Jack's agreement to continue your reign of terror. Okay, we're going to settle this once and for all who's running this company. Joan, yes. Is Jack still in the building? Good. Thank you. Okay. We're going to soon see who's running this ship. All right, there you go. Oh, Jack, there is no way to tell you how much this means to well, me. Well, we all need a little help from our friends sometimes, huh? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's well worth it. Excuse me. Oh, boy. Yes? Jack, I need your help. What? A major problem has arisen with Adam. And because you own 11% of the enchantment stock, you really must help settle this. Yes, well, I'm kind of involved in something right now. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. I would never want to disturb you. I, I really am sorry, but this, this is of primary importance, and it will only take a few minutes of your time. Please come to my office now. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. Oh, you see, you're wasting your time, Adam, because Jack would never side with you against me. He would for the good of the company. But you're the worst thing that ever happened to the company. Possibly the best. Uh -huh. You are, Adam, oh, how shall I put this, a despicable sleaze. <laughs> and Jack knows that. That's why Jack refused to cooperate with you once before. Oh, uh, he will. I wouldn't, wouldn't count on it this time, since the issue at hand seems to be your personal vendetta against Sarah. That is not true. Of whom Jack is very fond. Jack is loyal to this company, and that is exactly why he would never sell you his stock. That has nothing to do with this. And he certainly would never put some, some bubble-headed bimbo ahead of that loyalty. 
What are you still doing here? Sorry to bother you, Erica, but I came to uh, help you settle your little problem between you and Adam. Get out of my office. Get out of this building now. Did Jack send you? No, she's just trying to make me miserable. No, I'd never do that to a partner. Oh, this is unbelievable. Joan, get me the police. You are nothing more than a psychological terrorist. Actually, I'm a shareholder. Jack sold his 11% of enchantment stock to me. You. Jack sold his shares of enchantment stock to you? That's impossible. He sold you all 11%. It's against corporate bylaws. Travis managed to sell his 40% to me. You keep out of this. Jack used the same ploy. Now, you're lying. Oh. Joan, yes, get me Jackson Montgomery. Tell him I want to speak to him right away. We'll just see who owns the stock. Fine by me. What we're going to see is another one of your conquests has turned against you. I've got to hand it to Jack. He not only has guts, he's got one hell of a sense of humor. <laughs> yes, John. What? When? I say, well, all right. Uh, call around and find him. Thank you. It's going to be very easy to prove you're lying. Well, you can try, Erica, but I am Enchantment's third largest stockholder, which automatically makes me an officer of this company. <laughs> you an officer of my company? That is a joke that makes me laugh. Anyway, you're a pauper. Where in the world would you even get the money to buy those shares in my company? Well, I don't think that's any of your business. No, you don't have a penny. Okay, Jack is using you to make a point with me, but he certainly would never do anything like he this. He already did. We still have a few legal formalities to go through, but the basic exchange of stock has already taken place. Uh, the die is cast. <laughs> I'm no expert in corporate law, but Jack is, and he assured me, Erica, that this agreement is legally sound. He sold you his stock for one dollar? The document's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, no, the document is well, oh. worthless. It's only a copy. Oh. I've had enough of your smirking, Adam. Leave. Oh, no, oh, I, I, now? And this all the fun? Not on your life. I will give you a piece of advice, though. While you were not paying attention, Erica, a revolution took place. A whole new world order was established, and you were overthrown. So I suggest you accept the inevitable with as much grace as you can muster. Get out. <laughs> the three of us standing right here constitute the entire board of directors, the entire governing body of enchantment. And the issue on the table is simply, are we going to give Sirius' proposal the go-ahead? Now, I suggest a straw ballot. <clears throat> yes, right here, right now. And I vote my 40% yay. I vote my 11% yay. 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 <laughs> Erica, you're free to vote, I assume, your 49% nay. But it won't do any good because we have you outnumbered. Okay, your little game is over. I don't find it slightly amusing. Oh, well, that's too bad because I'm finding my involvement with, with enchantment Extremely amusing. So amusing, in fact, that if you should decide to sell your stock to me, I'll be glad to buy them. Okay, you know what? I'll have both of you out of here by noon, tomorrow. Oh, I'm out of here right now, Erica. And after you've spoken to Jack, we will just talk again. Uh, Sarah, why don't we have dinner tonight? Discuss company strategy. I'd love to, Adam. Gee, it's great to be aboard. Thanks for the warm welcome, Erica. Uh... By the way, if you should decide to sell your stock to me, I will retain full rights to the Erica Kane name and face for all products and promotional services. Get out. Goodbye, Adam. Which means, in essence, that I own you. At least, all of you that's worth anything. <laughs> Have a nice evening, Erica. Did you find him? Well, keep looking. Joan, I don't care. I don't care if it takes the whole damn night. And please, will you get somebody in here to clean up? 
I'm going to hold on to my company no matter what. They're highly unorthodox means of transferring stock in order to circumvent co uh, corporate bylaws. Yes, I know that, Walter, but is it legal? Well, on first glance, the uh, document appears sound, but well, naturally I'd have to do further research before rendering a final opinion. Excuse me. Yes, Joan? Well, oh, all right. Uh, send her in. What? No, Joan, you may not leave until you find Jack Montgomery for me. Joan, I don't care what time it is. All right, fine, leave. Mother, hello. Hi, honey. Walter? Hello, Mona. Mother, sit down. So, Walter, when can you give me your final opinion? Well, I'll call you first thing tomorrow morning. All right, listen, you must know something. I will not accept this. I'm not prepared to accept this. I understand, Erica. I'll, uh, I'll work out some countermeasures, come up with a strategy. Do it fast. It's nice to see you again, Mona. You too, Walter. Good night. <clears throat> Well, honey, what's wrong? Father, why are you here? I came to invite you to dinner. Dinner? Mother Jack has sold his, his shares of enchantment stock to Sarah. The only thing I can think about is homicide, not dinner. Look, oh, how could he do this? How could he do this to me? Sweetheart, why, why don't you calm down and tell me about it? Oh, when, when we have a nice hot dinner at the, at the Valley Inn. Okay, that's Jack. I do not want to speak to him on the telephone. You answer the phone, tell him that I want him to come over here immediately and talk to me. Well, go ahead, Mother. Hurry up. Answer the phone. Hello? Hello, dear. How are you? Don't be nice to him. What's the matter with you? Yes, she is. I'm not here. Just a minute, hon. Can't you do anything right? It's not Jackson. It's your daughter. Bianca, oh... Bianca, hi. Is that you, sweetheart? Hi, baby, where are you? In a phone booth. Oh, sweetheart, that is so precious of you to call me. Oh, yes, of course I'm still coming to, to Seattle. I wouldn't miss it for anything. I'm practically all pat. Oh, okay, I, I understand, honey. I love you. Bye-bye. Well, she, um, she had enough change to call me. She, she used her own allowance to make the call. I know you miss her so much. Oh, Mother, I can't bear it. I know. We shouldn't be apart. You're going to be seeing her very soon, dear. You know whose fault this is. Now, let's not place blame. This is Jack's fault. It's all Jack's fault. If he were to come through that door right now, I mean, I would just leap up and I would strangle him with my bare hands. with me. Uh, Adam and, Tra and, and Sarah here. So what? Well, maybe we should go someplace else. Oh, but I have them think that they forced me out? Not in your life. Table for two, please. This way. Thank you. Daffodils, honey, they're simply glorious. You know, it's such a welcome sight after oh, after no. winter. Oh, no, he's coming and the over wisteria. here, Mother. Don't say anything, you'll let him go to. Good evening, Mona. Erica, our other partner and I would be pleased if you and Mona would join us. And risk Sarah launching a food fight? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah and I would like to talk some business with you. I promise we won't bore you for too long. Have you suffered a hearing loss, Adam? I said no. I have a feeling your daughter would like to sink all ten of her claws into my eyes, Mona. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, she thinks you're the same poor excuse for a human being that I do, and she wishes you'd do everyone a favor, go back to your cheap little puppet and drop dead. Sarah and I have called a shareholders meeting for tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. sharp. Your office, Madam President, be there. One, two... Three. That's a very, very good idea, Erica. Count to ten and don't lose your temper. I hate him. Four. I hate his face. I, I hate the way he looks. I, I hate the way he sneers at me when he talks to I me. Understand Five. That. I loathe him, Mother. Six. He makes my skin crawl. He makes the hair on the back of my neck stand honey, up. Honey, honey. Seven. Could, could, could I make just one little suggestion, please? <clears throat> Look, 
since Jack and Travis have both sold their stock in, in, in Enchantment and they've left you out on a limb having to deal with Adam, why don't you at least consider selling your stock? Are you out of your mind, Mother? Sell the company that I have fought, bled, and died for? Are you... How could you even imagine something? Honey, honey, because I love you, I've seen you suffer a lot lately, and I don't want you to have to suffer anymore. Mother, don't you understand that enchantment is the only thing I have left? Everything else has been taken away from me. I've been stripped of my, my status as, as mother, as, as wife, but not my work. That is the only thing I have left. That company I built from the ground up, that company that I built in my own image, that is the only worthwhile thing I have left in my life. And it is my last hope, Mother. And I will never give up my last hope. I will never, never allow my company to fall into the slobbering jaws of Adam Chandler. KODE TV 12 Joplin. <laughs> What a pair. Two vultures ready for the kill. If it bothers you that much, don't look at them. They don't bother me, Mother. They, they infuriate me. Well, then, pay no attention. Okay. Hi, is this better? This chicken is superb. If they think that I'm going to just lie down and roll over and play dead, they are sadly mistaken because Enchantment is my company, and I am going to hold on to it no matter what. With them owning a controlling interest, Erica, you're going to practically have to work this out. This is Jack's fault. It's all Jack. It is, Mother. And I meant what I said before. He can't hide from me forever. And when he comes out, I am going to kill him. Oh, Erica. Oh, Eric. the worm crawled out of his hole for a little air. Excuse me, Mother. Uh, I'll be just you, a minute. Uh, stay right here. Come on, don't... Hi. Hi, hi. You and Adam enjoying yourselves? Well, I'd enjoy myself a little more if you didn't seem so miserable. Oh, don't worry about me, please. Jack? I think maybe you should leave. Erica is really livid over you selling the stocks to me. Oh, I'll bet she is. Jack, I mean it. Look, I'm not going to spend my life running from Erica's case. Excuse me, is this a uh, get revenge on Erica party? It wasn't revenge, Erica. Oh, really? What would you call it? You don't have to answer that. Oh, is that free legal advice? Look, Erica, you came over here, and I wanted you to say what you're going to say and go. I don't think I need to hear this. Oh, don't leave on my account, Trash. Why are you looking even more full of yourself than usual this evening? What happens? You hang out with somebody like Adam Chandler and Sarah Connor and the callousness rubs off? Yeah, I guess that that's what exactly what happens. Are you finished now? Are you happy now? That I lost my daughter and I lost my company thing? Please, we're not going to go through this again, are we? Okay, here's the bottom line. I loved you. I mean, I really loved you. And I gave more of myself to you than I had given to any other man in my life. And I trusted you. And you abandoned me. No one has ever hurt me as much as you have hurt me. I thought you'd like to know that. You know what? I guess it was my mistake anyhow, because... I really didn't think that you were as vindictive as your brother. I guess it just runs in the family, right? Well, at least I see you for what you really are. I really don't like what I see, but you know what? It's going to make it a lot easier for me to get over you. You make it? Have a nice evening. I love this job. Erica, hi. Hi, where is everybody? Well, you're a little late for workout. I'm closing up. Oh, no. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, I was, of course, foolish to think anything could go right today. You having a bad day? 
Only the worst day in the history of the world, that's all. I was stupid enough to think I could come here and maybe work off some of this, this tension. A little stressed out. Yeah, I am frankly quite close to committing murder, if you really want to know the truth. Ah, uh, well, I don't want to be an accessory to murder, so uh, go change. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Great. Okay. Ah, I got some bad news. I got to stick around for a while. Why? Erica wants to work out. Well, why didn't you just tell her that you were closed? I couldn't do that, you know? She's a close friend of Tom's. And besides, you know, she had a bummer of a day. Yeah, well, mine isn't shaping up too great either. Live on five. Jack, I, I don't have a clue as to what you're talking about. Not a clue. Let me give you one. Brooke. Oh, Brooke. Oh, of course. Well, who else? You know, you've sunk pretty deep this time. I mean, you have cut yourself a new all-time low. And if I was you, I wouldn't try to dig myself in any deeper. Oh, well, I don't suppose that you are interested in hearing anyone else's side of the story. I mean, you have no idea what she did to me. Whatever Brooke did to you, Erica, I'm sure you more than deserved it. Why don't you just tell me exactly um, how much mud she slung this time? Brooke didn't sling any mud this time. You see, that's your tactic. She wouldn't stoop to that. Oh, oh, I see. No, of course not. Not your Miss Brooke. Oh, no, not queen of the innocent, uh, patron saint of purity, uh, virtuous to a fault, friend of the friendless lover of all. You know, obviously, your good judgment has gone totally out the window since Brooke jumped into your bed. So guess what? You don't want to hear the truth about anything? I'm leaving. I'm not finished. I don't care. Jack! What are you doing, Jack? Put me down! Jack! Now, you were going to sit there. And you're going to listen to the gospel according to somebody other than Erica King. All right. How Brooke chooses to raise her family is nobody's business but hers. It's certainly not yours. And who the hell are you to go into her home and accuse her of using people? Oh, I can't stand this, Jack. Brooke is not the grieving little widow she pretends to be. She has lied through her teeth to everyone in this town about, about the father of her, her poor little baby and, and Tom's sweet, naive oh, Tom. Hold, just hold it. Tom was not Brooke's dupe. Tom went into this with his eyes wide open. He knew exactly what was going on. All Tom is guilty of is trying to help a friend. Erica. Oh, please. I mean, Brooke lured him to the altar with promises of a, of a perfect little family dangling in front of his nose. And Tom, being the, the simple, sweet man Tom is, Tom believed her. It's amazing. It's amazing how you can take the facts of an event and twist them so that they support this, these, these, these hidden little agendas of yours. Oh, fine. That's all right. Okay. You paint me the villain and Brooke plays the martyr. That's fine. That's okay. Guess what? This is not the first time. I'm used to it. Every time Brooke wants something, she tries to use some man to get it. Be very careful. I'm telling you, be very, very, very careful. Okay, you think about this. Every time she wants something, right? A little cushy job, uh, a name on a birth certificate, some surrogate father. What does she do somehow? She puts those dubious charms of hers into overdrive and lures some other poor sap into her dangerous I'm liaison. You, one more word about Brooke, and I'm going to take you, and I'm going to turn you over my knee, and I'm going to spank you into the middle of next week. Do you hear me? You wouldn't dare. Try me. Well, I am hurt. I really am. I mean, the only reason I even went to Brooke in the first place is I was trying to do you a favor. A favor? <laughs> yes, ha ha, a favor. I mean, I went to Brooke because I was afraid that maybe because I left my ring in your bedroom that just might have bollocked things up for you. You know, Erica, this, 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 is, this is almost convincing to hear you say Almost? That. Yes, you see, it's only almost convincing because I've seen your entire repertoire. I've seen every act you put on, and I've seen how well they usually work. This is no act. Yes, and pinks, and pigs have little pink wings. What, what are you talking about? Why? I have seen the backbreaking competition. I have seen the endless manipulation. I have seen the utter annihilation of anything or anybody that gets in the way of what, what you, you want. What are you talking about? I am talking about the fact that there is very little under this sun that Erica King would not do to achieve her goal. Okay. And what, pray tell, is this fabulous goal that I am willing to kick, kill, and, and fight, and, and steal for? Me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
this is rich. I mean, this is really rich. I have seen egos of monumental proportion in my lifetime, but this ego trip of yours, this is really first-class, plush red carpet all the way. Well, allow me to bring you back to Earth. I have never even dreamed of trying to rekindle what you and I once shared. And for your information, after this nasty attack on me, you have erased every possibility of that ever, ever occurring. I mean, I had thought that, that possibly, just possibly, you might be adult enough to build a friendship out of this mess. I mean, that's all I wanted. Just a, a simple, civilized adult friendship. But no, I should have known that that was beyond you. Hi, I listen. No, you shut up. You had your turn. Now it's my turn. It is clear to me that the old Jackson Montgomery is back. That horrible, disgusting egotist who thinks that he is God's gift to women. Well, sorry. Sorry to inform you. Here's a flash. Not every woman who smiles at you or offers you a civil word or a kind gesture has fallen madly, truly, deeply in love with you and wants to reel you in. Get over it, Jack. Stop being so conceited and just grow up. Message received. Loud and clear. Well, good. And all you want to do is just be friends. Is that right? That's all I want. That's fine. As long as you know that nothing else is possible. As if I wanted anything else to be possible. Hear me now. Brooke and I are involved. We are together. And nothing you can do or say is going to change that. I don't want to change that. I'm happy for you. Jack, you must admit, if there's anything I know about, it's relationships. You and Brooke have one. Great. I don't want to do anything to spoil that. I'll be Brooks, maid of honor. I'll throw oh. rice at the church if that's what you want me to do. That is, if you're engaged. But, no, 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 not, not formally, no, no. Oh? Babe, don't you worry. When we are, you will be the first person that we call. Well, swell. Peachy, great. Okay, is that all you came over here to tell me? Yeah, yeah, I think that just about covers it. Yes. Well, fine, then why don't you just stop pawing the ground and printing over the size of your antlers? This is a place of business. I'm very glad we had this chance to uh, clear things up. <laughs> That was a magnificent performance. You have taken the art of lying to new heights. You deserve a wing in the Smithsonian. So inventive. Eve's dropper. A simple, civilized adult friendship. That was priceless. Oh, you are despicable. Oh, when I have you is privacy you want. You should learn not to drag your affairs of the heart into the workplace. This is not an affair of the heart. And not that it's any of your concern. But since you listened, I'll tell you something. Every word I said to Jack Montgomery was true. <laughs> Oh, come on, come on, keep going. This is hilarious. No, I swear it. Oh, yes. Cross my heart and hope to die. Erica, you want Jack back so badly you can taste it. No, everybody. The entire staff has the down. I just run it up a flagpole, see if she salutes.
start off your day talking some party business, huh? The fundraiser? Yeah, listen, I've had an idea, and I don't really want to wait on it. The trouble is, I leave for a business trip in about an hour. So, how about I meet you down at your enchantment office as uh, soon as you can get there? Well, uh, let me just check my book. Okay. Yes, uh, I can do that. Uh, my morning's free. May I come in? Yes, of course. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, no, thanks. I'm, I'm fine. All right. All right, then, well, let's get to work, then. Why don't you tell me all about your party idea? Okay. All right, so we're going to have this dance at the country club to try to raise money for our environmental cause. But I'm thinking, let's not do it the same old hackneyed way that everybody else does it. Let's not have this thing where people sign up for prizes that they don't really want or that they could buy better for themselves. The raffle. You would like to ask like the raffle. I'd like to ask the raffle for something more fun, I think, okay? Okay, like what? Okay. We put the men of Pine Valley on the block. Not for kisses, but to auction them off as dance partners. By dances instead of kisses. Exactly right. Now, a fast dance would come cheap, but a slow dance, you see, would be a little more. Mm, and a tango would bring in a premium dollar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I think great. Good. I, I also thought that we could, uh, oh, have a spicy mistress of ceremonies to start things off, get things rolling, and then we can just uh, sit back and rake in the dough. <laughs> <laughs> great photo opportunity. I mean, absolute publicity bonanza for yeah, the campaign. Yeah, sure. Plus, I think it would also be a uh, real hoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do, too. Absolutely. I mean... Well, for one thing, can you imagine that the males in this town all vying for the top dollar bid? <laughs> you like this idea, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yes, I do. I, I, I think that you men, you have never known the agony of defeat, never known the agony of being a wallflower. I think this just might be very sweet revenge. I think I've unloosed a monster. <laughs> I don't know. You think that the uh, male egos in this town are strong enough for you? No, no, no. How bad do you think it might be? I don't know. Which male do you think might bring the top dollar bid? Hmm, probably the guys with the top dollars. Adam Chandler. <laughs> Jeremy Hunter, Palmer Court. You've got a dime or two. <laughs> our, our, our high school hero, Tom Cudahy. Jackson Montgomery. Well, I don't know that I'm going to bring a very high bid, but... Oh, Jackson, my goodness, such modesty. I don't know you anymore. Come on, you know the women in this town. They appreciate quality. Sweet boyfriend of yours doing, huh? Well... Look, let's not get too uh, carried away talking about my bidding potential. Huh? Jack, who is this sitting next to me? Where did you get this false modesty? Come on, of course you're going to bring in a, a big bid. I think you'll bring in the highest bid. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Foley is here to see you. Oh, uh, Mr. Foley from city council? Mm -hmm. He says he must see you. It's a matter of vital environmental importance. I see. All right. Yes. Yes. Send him in, then, John. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, this I gotta see. Why? This councilman Frank Foley is one of the largest proponents of the landfill. Uh-huh. He's for it. Oh, for it. <laughs> He's vehemently for it. Uh, well, Mr. Foley, hello. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Kane. And you're here, too, Mr. Montgomery. Perfect. Hi, it saves me a trip. Well, why don't you tell me, then, exactly what is this important issue that you were so concerned about? The landfill project at Mar Vista, I'm just as worried about our air and water and so forth as you are. And uh, I would very much love to help our environment. Well, that's just wonderful. I'm so very glad to hear that. I've noticed that the two of you are uh, working to block the landfill. And I wanted to make sure you understand what's at stake here. Well, I believe that's quite clear, Mr. Folia. Pine Valley is at stake. It certainly is. The economic health of this community is just as important as its environmental health, and when it's endangered, we all suffer. So you're saying that you believe the land so... That uh, the economic opportunity for this town is too great for us to squelch it. Come on, Frank, you gotta be kidding. Now, this project will create jobs. It's gonna bring in revenue. It's gonna expand our opportunities to attract major industries. I don't see exactly how one thing follows the other, Mr. Folia. Frank? Um... We can't have economic growth if we don't have the ability to handle waste. And for two distinguished citizens such as yourselves to so publicly 
oppose this landfill. Well, it's got to be a mistake. It's got to be a misunderstanding. <laughs> and that's why I came. Because I want to make sure you understand what's involved and what damage you could do to this town by opposing the landfill. Now, you just wait a minute right there now, Mr. Foley. I don't believe you came to explain anything to me. I believe you came here to intimidate me. No. Oh, yes, and you cannot intimidate me, Mr. Folia. You cannot make me back down from my convictions, and I will not withdraw my opposition to your insidious landfill. Jobs. Economic opportunity. Who are we kidding here? The only people who stand to gain economically are you and your city council cronies. That's who you will gain personal riches. I don't have to listen to this. Mr. Folia. Listen, you and your city council chums. I mean, not only are you being ignorant, but you are being short-sighted. Do you honestly think that I would keep my business in a town where the air had gone foul, where the water had been ruined? Do you think any other business person would? Do you honestly think that I could seriously ask my employees to raise their children in a town where, where they sell their prime properties to garbage dumps? We're only talking about one landfill. Oh, please don't insult me, Mr. Folia. And don't ever dare to come here again and try to talk me out of working for something that I believe so firmly in. I love this town. I love this Pine Valley, and I'm going to do everything possible and necessary to make sure that it stays clean and beautiful. So you go back to your city council chums, Mr. Folia, and you tell them not even to dare think about trying to push me around on this. Miss Kane. Go away, Mr. Folia. And why don't you try working for Pine Valley for a change instead of your own personal gain? Good day. I've got to vacuum, Cowboy. Let loose the dogs of war. Erica Kane leads the legions into battle. Well, it is a war, isn't it, Jack? I mean, I want Bianca to have a safe world to grow up in, and it's just not going to be safe unless we fight that war. Well, I guess maybe it's just that I haven't seen your particular brand of fireworks in some time. You made me mad. You also seem to have a really sharp sixth sense about snooping off phonies like Frank Foley. Oh, well, he's going to have to sharpen his act a lot and polish it up and everything else if he expects anybody to believe that he is community-minded. Yes, well, I think maybe this run-in with you will point that up to him. You know, I, I care so much about the earth, but I'm telling you, until I had to tell that man off, I mean, I didn't know that I loved Pine Valley. I, I'm telling you, this whole thing, it just it cleared everything up for me. It really just, it sharpened my focus. Put a pretty good edge on your tongue, too. I guess it did, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. But I do say so myself. I was quite eloquent, wasn't well, you I? Meant. You were. Uh, thank you. Well, the war is on. And I pity the opposing forces. Mm. We shall show no mercy. <laughs> like these before. <laughs> Job is supposed to be fun. The Wonder Years, Wednesday. Well, I suppose you'll have to get going to the airport now, then, Jack, but thank you so much for coming by and, and telling me all about your idea for the auction. I think thank it'll you. be a lot of fun. Oh, oh, yes, sure. it really would be just a great fundraiser. Well, I need to, uh, I need to get going, so I'll uh, give you a call when I get back in town. Great. Thanks for seeing me. Sure. Adam? Jack? Enchantment is not having a fundraiser? No, of course not. Then? Jack and I are serving on the same committee to save Mar Vista. The projected site for the landfill? You, you're working for Phoebe Tyler? Oh, I prefer to think of it as working for our planet. You an environmental, <laughs> an environmentalist? That's a very nice reaction. Well, Erica, I'm sorry, but I just can't see you as a crusader for Mother Earth. Well, then maybe you better get used to it, because you're going to be seeing it a lot. Erica, please. The look I just walked in on had nothing to do with the environment. I beg your pardon? You know, Jack may be perfectly sincere, but you, my dear, are working on another project entirely. Namely, the reclamation of Jackson Montgomery? Spare me your observations, Adam. <laughs> I have no doubt you'll get him. 
But once you've gotten him, are you sure you want him? Why don't you just leave now, Adam? I'm right on all counts. I have a lot of work to do. I've already lost a lot of time. I'm going. I admire a woman who never quits. Go. Go. No, no way, man. Oh, come on, Brian. She's majorly hung up on you. All right, you're crazy, pal. Pork. The other white meat. Tough guy, Chuck Norris. Hi. Next line. Look, you keep missing the meetings, and Phoebe is bound to catch on. Catch on to what? Well, that you're only interested in saving the earth when Jack is there. Now, if I was you, I would put in an appearance right this afternoon, else she's going to start thinking that you're not pulling your weight. You know, and then heaven knows what. Well, let her just throw me off the committee. I don't care. Oh, now, come on. You don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. And I would like to save the earth. But yes. The only reason I joined that particular committee was because of Jack, and let's just face it, I've been wasting my time. Oh, now, 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 that is just not true. You just gotta be patient, that's all, honey. And the guy's gonna swim right into your net. And then all you have to do is just haul him in. Yeah, or maybe I'm gonna fall overboard trying to haul him in. Come in! Jack! Good morning. How are my two favorite co-committee members this fine autumn morning? Well, I'm full foliage, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. Trevor, Natalie just sold me this house. Did you have a good trip? Yes, thank you. As a matter of fact, I did. Got my business deal wrapped up a little early and even had time for a little socialization. Oh. I didn't know you had friends in Tucson. Well, they're business associates. They've kind of become friends. I was at a cocktail party, as a matter of fact, with them, and I heard a great idea for our little fundraiser. Oh, really? You mean instead of the auction? Well, maybe in addition to it. Now, here it is. You ready for this? Boom, boom. <laughs> I dance at them. Oh, you mean like in the Depression when they well, dance till they drop? No, I don't think we have to go quite that far. <laughs> yeah, like, like that, a yeah. walkathon then, where people get friends and, and companies to sponsor them? Oh, right, yeah. and folks pay X number of dollars for each mile that you walk or dance in our case. In this case, we would get somebody to pledge a certain amount of money for every minute that we dance. Oh, or that uh, you dance, Twinkle Toes. <laughs> I think it's a fabulous idea, Jack. Great. Oh, yeah. yeah I you think okay, uh, at this morning's committee meeting, I'll just toss it in the creek, see if it floats. Well, no, 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 you don't have to do that. I just wanted to see if it floated here first. I'll take care of that. <laughs> I think it's great. Oh, that's one. yeah, and if it rakes in big bucks, it's got my vote. That's two. Three, that's a quorum. <laughs> All right. Listen, uh, anybody need a ride to Phoebe's? Oh, no, no, thanks. I've got my car. But Erica, I think, here could probably... No, thank you really very ride. much, but I just, I have all this work staring me in the face. Uh, but so honey, we need your input. Well, she's absolutely right, we do. Yeah, come on, work on her, Jack, well, would you? I mean, uh, it is for a good cause. I, I will try. I'll try my best to... You'd better. This earth of ours is in a lot of trouble, you know. And we need somebody with your fire to help get us out of it. All right, I'll be there. <laughs> but uh, I'll meet you there, okay? First of all, I really need to attack all this work that's piled up on my desk. Okay, I'm out of here. I'll see you there. All righty. See you in a minute. All right, Opal, well, you go ahead. I'll, I'll run into your feet. Good, honey. I mean, even the very best of poker players can be known to overplay their hands. Oh, don't worry. Well, I am worried. I mean, there is such a thing as playing it too cool. Opal, Jack is a very smart man. If I'm going to get through to him, pierce that really, you know, that veneer he's got up, well, then I'm just going to have to do it slowly. I'm going to have to do it subtly. So go on. You're alone. Go to Phoebe's. I'll be there shortly. All right. I just hope you know what you're doing. But you've got, you've got some temper, pal. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go tell her right now. Go right in, Miss Kane. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Valentine. You're welcome. Thank you. Delicious. Well, well, well. I see you finally managed to tear yourself away from Chen. Oh, well, some things I can delegate, some things I cannot. Oh, I don't know. Sarah's awfully capable. Yes, she is. I'm very fortunate to have her. Maybe next time you can show up at the meeting on time. 
Well, Jack, I just told you something. You see, if like this you... project is going to fly, Eric, it needs somebody like you to get a wing. Someone like me? Yes. Somebody with a high profile. Somebody who's in the public eye. Somebody who can give our cause the attention it deserves. And, of course, a little attention for herself along the way. Wait a second. Are you suggesting that I have an ulterior motive for joining you? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that you love the center stage. You love the limelight. This is true, yes? You do thrive on it? Oh, I see. So, um, keeping the landfill out of Pine Valley is, uh, incidental to keeping myself in the limelight. Is that, is that what you're saying, Jack? Is that what you think of me? No. No, of course not. I'm just kidding you. I couldn't resist it. Come on. Come in here and sit down with your old buddy. <laughs> it's been going for a while, though, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, just to keep the record you know, absolutely straight, I do love Pine Valley. I mean, I know that in the past I have been guilty of putting it down a lot, but I mean, the truth is, I love Pine Valley. I believe you. You sold me. I believe you. Honestly, I do. <laughs> <laughs> then tell me all about the Tucson. Tucson. Well, first of all, it's beautiful. Oh. Well, my goodness. Hello, Erica. Hi, Brooke. How are you? Hi. Well, don't tell me that you are joining our committee after all. 